Tonight I want to speak to you about community trust and data gathering related to this long-range facility plan, which I think you're all familiar with, and the Bold Initiative. So a lot of people in this room are kind of of the next generation. They don't know me, but I volunteered a lot on levy campaigns over about 15 years or so, maybe my math's off. Um, Probably spending most of my time on that yes to kids levy the blue shirts. If those of you who are not familiar with that, that's okay. Uh, in 2012, I was asked to work on a budget cutting committee. We were trying to set priorities to better communicate what types of cuts could occur should a levy not pass, and we did our job. The levy passed. I was underwhelmed by the level of data. And it seems kind of silly to even be called a long-range facility plan. And I'll tell you why. You're looking at a 10-year cycle. These buildings last a little longer than 10 years. This move anytime soon. I am very concerned that not enough things have been considered. And there has not been enough careful scrutiny. Are you really making these decisions just based on 10 years of data? I, I can't believe that. I, my background is in organizational development and change management. So I do a lot of <coughs> consulting with professionals and business leaders to help lead them through organizational wide change. Approximately 70% of all organiza organizational change efforts fail due to lack of a clear vision, no buy-in, and concerns about security and loss. I will say, while the bold proposal, the philosophy on paper to have equity of programming sounds like a great idea, what I, when I met with the administration on January 4th, it really disheartened me to learn that there was not a plan, facts, or data to stand behind how we were going to pay for the bold proposal. So while we all know that we are already in a shortfall, we say we have 1.2 six million dollar deficit, there has not been a plan in place to say how are we going to pay for this equity and programming. When I met with the district administration on January 4th, they told us that there were three concerns. Capacity, equity and programming, and one point two six million dollar deficit. Let's have a collaborative working session with community and administration to look at these three issues that we need to solve. Does this plan set our children of our neighborhood up to do well? Our students that do not have transportation reliably with their parents are able to walk to our school building. Their parents are able to be active in our school community regardless of ability to own a car or fill that car with gas. Our school helps to take care of many families that are working hard to give their families shelter and food to cover their basic human needs. Oak Park's proximity and ability to recognize what is needed are valuable resources to these families. So I would like to ask, what is the plan? Who is in charge of that plan? What does this proposal prepare to give our kids for their sacrifice? Our children are facing losing everything that they know. What is this plan going to do to guarantee our children success? What thought has been given to our kids? We understand the thought given to the students in the south end of the district and the other schools and their needs, but what about our children and the impact to our children? Park. We understand that many other schools were also considered, and the fact that Oak Park was chosen simply because it would potentially make the best office space and because it has the <coughs> parking is wrong and insulting. At the 67-minute uh, mark of the presentation, Dr. McDowell stated that he will guarantee the current capture rate of 72% will increase to 85% if we just lock in the E21 programming. Given all the risk involved, I think it's great that the board has gotten financial guarantees from the leadership team linked to the su success of this plan. Well done, and I commend you guys for this. Can you please provide the public with details of these financial guarantees that the employees are making? Is it a percentage of their salary, or a portion of their post-retirement benefits, or, or what is it? Question two. What about other options, other opportunities, other ideas? The administration admits, hey, it's out of ideas. They can only come up with one. <laughs> Slow down. Good help. I am a city planner by profession and have spent the last year and a half developing a, 
bike and trail plan for the city of Stillwater. I do want to note that we did take a year and a half on a bike and trail plan, and we had over 15 public meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I've worked in the public sector for over 20 years and have helped develop community consensus on many, many controversial proposals. Your um, proposal developed in isolation without any community input <coughs> is a textbook example of what not to do. You held no public meetings in the process of developing the proposal or, when making, or before making a formal recommendation. The timeline is needlessly aggressive. The public hearing process is just barely, and I'm not even sure, meets the absolute minimum allowed by state statute. In any case, the best public process is always more, not less. You're holding your public hearings here at Oakland Junior High, the most inconvenient conceivable location to the schools being closed, you're withholding relevant information, such as the redistricting plan, that should be shared before a decision is made. Your communications disparage pre previous planning efforts and community understanding. Intentional or not, the process is disrespectful to people who have been actively involved in this school district, given their time and resources. Given the approach to date, I have little hope of a change in course. But I continue to ask that we withdraw this proposal, that we begin again with humility, trust, and be open to learning. A public hearing is meant to be a two-way process. <laughs> Statutory definition, two-way communication. We're supposed to ask questions, you're supposed to answer them. In my experience, this doesn't meet the definition of a public hearing. We need, to, we need to have that dialogue in order to move forward as a community on any decision. Thank you. Thought you guys were geniuses. You have the perfect model. And, you, and I, I don't want to change my mind. I don't want to say you screwed it up. I want to say you're geniuses still. Yeah. You're talking about kids that are six, seven, eight, nine, their whole neighborhoods, their whole communities. You're closing every school in the North District to bus them for an hour? Are you, I, I'm, I don't want to get too emotional, but that's not brilliant. Uh, when Maureen decided to become part of the public school system, Y'all told them they would never, never, never close it. Ever. That's a contract. And in 1996, Lyman Geary stood up here and he told you that, and y'all listened. And it's the same contract, and it's still in place. You can't close Marine. 